and teeth I didn't know who I was or who I could be But then a heart of compassion shared to me That there's more to life than this On that day Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on what time you're tuning in. Welcome 
to the Sunday service, and it's a Sunday once again. I'm currently right now here shooting from the home office, and I'm glad to see you here. Glad to see you all uh, joining us right now on your seats, on your kitchens, or you might be in your living rooms, you might be in your bedrooms, wherever you are right now. Get yourselves ready and get yourselves comfy, but of most of all, get yourselves intimate and ready within this gathering. So although right now we're not exactly in one uh, in the same place, we are from different locations, but despite that, whenever where we are gathered right now, God is in our midst. Now, to get ourselves ready and situated, let us first think about how God is good, how God has blessed us, and how God continues to guide us and teach us in this very day and age. So I would like to give you a few minutes, or make, make it like a minute or so at least, give you a mo few moments to reflect, to look back, and to give thanks. So let's get started with that. I'll come back for you in a bit, all right? All right, looks like we managed to get ourselves ready. I do hope your hearts and your minds are as ready as well. Because in a bit, we'll be singing along with the worship team and you're going to be dancing and singing and just have your moment with God. All right? Before I do that, before we do that, let me usher you in with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that another month has passed, another time has come through and we are reaching further and further into the year with your glory and with your grace leading us through. We thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for what you've been teaching us and may you do so continue to guide us wherever we are right now. Lord, we thank you so much that as we gather here, despite our distance, despite our location, despite of where we are right now, may you abound in our midst, that you must increase, that you will be glorified, O oh Lord, that we may be holy and acceptable to you as we provide our offerings, our lives as living sacrifices. We give you all the glory and honor and praise in Christ's name. Amen. All right, time to get ready for the service. So if you can stand up, go ahead, join us. Or if you're like me, right, sitting down, if you feel like sitting down right now, you can, it's okay. Join me while you're sitting down, but make sure to be ready to sing and dance and at least clap along because we're going to start the service and we're going to go at it singing, dancing, rejoicing. Ready? Worship team, go ahead and lead us to the service.
Another beautiful Sunday it is to celebrate and kick off June as it is. And welcome to Gateway Community Church. This is another opportunity where we can experience God's goodness and continue on with our direction towards reaching people and transforming lives. Today, we continue on on where we kick off last or, you know, left off, I should say, last week on the story of Nehemiah. But nonetheless, this time, we're going to continue on a bit in that direction, however, with a different focus. and. This time around, gusto ko pong pag-usapan natin how it is to be with people who are, you know, possessing continuous spirit in a sense na nakakahawa po sila. Yun ang malimit na sinasabi natin no? in our vernacular language. Have you ever been with people that are truly exciting to be with or not just fun to be with, but yung they are truly an encouragement to us. Alam nyo, hindi lang dahil naiingganyo tayong kasama sila, pero yung nakakagaan ng loob at pagkasama natin sila, even things that seem impossible or things that we w- wouldn't even think about doing, you know, we, ha- we find, you know, the strength to do it because they are around. And today we're going to talk about exactly just that. So let's begin with this particular idea in mind. Remember Paul? Uh, Apostle Paul, when he was like kind of encouraging the young apprentice, Timothy, when he said this, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on life eternal, whether thou has called, sabi niyo to, and didst confess the good confession in the sight of many witnesses. Now, the challenge here being is to run your race with faith and confidence. And how does one do that? Paano po tayo magpapatuloy na talagang meron tayong kumpiyansa at tunay nga na tayo ay hindi lang sa nalilibang, pero tiwala po tayo na 
kung ano man ang pinasimulan ng Panginoon sa ating mga buhay, ay tatapusin niya ng tiyak at mainam. So, as we continue on with that thought or idea in mind, let's uh, kind of begin this message right, with this thought in mind. Sabi niya po ni Apostle Paul yet again, Don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company corrupts good character. Okay? Think careful about or carefully about what is right and stop sinning for, sabi niya, your shame, I say, that some of you don't know God at all. Now, ito po napaka, napaka, ano, napaka ironic, no? or how, how we say, presented in a two different extreme. Na sabi niya na, do not be fooled. Because while he was talking about, you know, obeying God and living godly lives, at the same time, he was warning believers by saying to them, wag kayong paiisa, o wag kayong, ano, wag kayong maililib- maililigaw, I should say, no? Dahil maraming, you know, pagkakataon na hindi natin nababantayan, this is the very idea or thought in mind here, na, you know, understand one thing, and this is a very faithful axiom, no? Choose your friends well, because they become who you are. Parang ganun po yung sinasabi dito ni Apostle Paul. At sa kanya pong pagtuturo sa atin, makikita natin na sabi niya, bad company corrupts good habits. Okay, and I'd like to believe, contrary to that, good company builds good habits. Okay, so alin sa dalawa? Okay, pero isa ang hindi natin maikukubli. Yung katotohanan na tayo po ay malimit, naaapektuhan, kung sino man yung malimit na kaulayaw o kasama po natin. So, I say again, choose your associates very carefully. They have the power to stir your future. Okay? So, in short, kung titingnan po natin, malimit sa mga pinagdaanan natin sa buhay natin o yung mga experiences natin, meron po tayong mga pinagdaanan na hindi dahil pinagdesisyonan talaga natin yun ng mainam. Kung hindi, may kadalasan nadamay lang tayo kumbaga dahil sa paanyaya ng iba no because of the influence or invitation of others so you know let's go back to Nehemiah for a short bit if you would still remember okay Nehemiah talked about this Sanbalat no let's try to go to our story last week and dig further sabi niya and Geshem sent to me saying come okay let us meet together you know at Hakepin or Hakepirim I should say in the plain of Uno no but tinanong ito meron pong nakalagay dito but they intended to do me in short there, there was an invitation supposed invitation okay but actually the invitation was a trap the invitation was actually isang patibong no na gustong kumbaga pagsamantalahan at patayin si Nehemiah you know in a sense na kunin ng kanyang buhay okay at makikita po natin na uh, and i sent a messenger na napakaganda napakatalino ng sagot ni Nehemiah sabi niya is I am doing a great work, okay? And I cannot come down. Why should I, I mean, why should the work stop while I leave and come down to you? Now, a couple of sermons way, way, months ago, I talked about this. The importance of, you know, valuing, you know, the things that truly mean value. There, there was a sermon that I preached about value and value, no? Or giving value on value. And at the same time, I talked about, at the same time, the importance of doing a great work in the context of obeying God's work. Now, so, as we continue on with the story yet again, pardon me for the segue, uh, <clears throat> sabi ni Nehemiah, so the wall was finished, okay? This was where we left off last week, okay? On the 25th day of Il- the month of Elul, in, the, in 52 days, and when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own steam. For they perceive, nalaman nila, that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. Now, last week, if you would still remember, no, for some of you, or if you've been following through this series, last week I talked about you know, the importance of the passion and the burden of Nehemiah, you know, and, and how it affected him. And last week we also kind of, you know, story short, you know, long story short, we left off with, the wall being finished. And right now, we're gonna, you know, pick up from that uh, particular scenario. So, let's look further. Kung titignan po natin, no? Uh, let me kind of just put this as a reminder throughout the sermon. This is kind of be our, kumbaga, uh, guiding factor or guiding, guiding, you know, note. That breakthroughs, okay? Yung mga katangumpayan na matatanggap o 
ma kumbaga ma, ma, makukuha natin sa ating pong paglalakbay bilang isang mananampalataya ay nangyayari dahil po sa mga pusong naka kumbaga naka atang or naka salalay o naialay sa Panginoon. Now, breakthroughs are actually birthed through compassion and fueled by biblical community. Now, I remember this uh, quote from Chick Chip Ingram in one of his book, na sabi niya na ang katagumpayan daw ay nagmumula o kumbaga nagsisimula sa pagkilos ng, no, ng isang kumbaga uh, katuwiran na nagmumula sa puso ng Panginoon at makikita po natin ito sa banal na kasulatan. And I'd like to kind of point out that you have to understand one thing, okay? Uh, Joe Paterno, in one of his uh, kind of discussion, he talked about, you know, believe deep down in your heart that you're destined to do great things. No, I'll, I'd love to believe that because this is exactly what it means to be salt and light. Especially during these troubling times that the best thing for us to silly, really, really, you know, allow our light to shine as believers is hindi lang para nakita natin yung isang pangangailangan, okay? At alam natin kung ano yung pangangailangan na yun at tayo ay nagkaroon po ng, kumbaga, we're concerned, no? tayo ay kumbaga uh, inari natin yung pangangailangan na yun at bukod sa lahat, tayo po ay gumawa ng paraan para tugunin ang pangangailangan na yun. But at the same time, I'd like to kind of dwell on this as we kick off June. Okay? The difference between an amateur, I love this quote, the difference between an amateur and a professional is in their habits. Okay? In short, napaka-practical, an amateur has an amateur habit or has amateur habits. A professional has professional habits. Okay, we can never free ourselves from habit, but we can replace bad habits with good ones. Okay, totoo yun. Lahat tayo, meron tayong kani-kaniyang paraan o gawi, no? Na kinalilibangan o malimit ginagawa. Sabi niya, at dalawang klase lang yung mga bagay na yun. Isang mabuti, isang masama. Hindi natin kayang tanggalin yung mga gawi natin, pero pwede nating palitan ng mainam o ng masama. So in short, you know, understand one thing. We first make our habits and then our habits make us. No? I, I remember, uh, you know, uh, coming across, you know, a reading of mine. Uh, there was this particular kind of progressive thought that says this. You know, you sow a thought, you reap an act. You sow an act, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. And when you sow a character, you reap your destiny. In short, yung pong ating mga kung sino man tayo ngayon at yung whatever makes us in terms of character, no, I'm referring to that, has something to do with the little bitty habits that we began with. Una, isang simpleng bagay lang na nakasanayan, nakagawian, hanggang naging bahagi na po ng ating pang-araw-araw na gawi. Those are very significant, okay, uh, kind of little things that sometimes affects us or for the most of us, most part of it, if we're not careful, you know, into trying to shape it the way it should be, makes us. So, let's begin with this. Okay? Makikita po natin, balikin natin si Nehemiah. Okay? Nehemiah had a burden. Nehemiah saw the need. Nehemiah went and responded to the need, acted on the need. You know, and there are a couple of things that we would see why Nehemiah was a successful leader. Okay? Number one is because he, in the midst of a great need, was not only sensitive to the need, but he was consistent all throughout. Kung babasahin niyo po ang kwento ni Nehemiah, okay, sabi ko nga, nung nakaraan, he was a servant, but then when he returned to Judah, the king himself designated him not only just a regular servant as he is, but when he came back to Judah, he was given the title of a governor. Can you just imagine? Okay, he was actually tasked to rule over Judah. I mean, he has the legal right to do so. Pero ang mainam po kay Nehemiah, hindi po niya ginampanan yung kanyang tungkulin you know, dahil sa kanyang titulo. Not because he was given a position or a title and he kind of led because of his title. No, no, no. Nehemiah led regardless of the title. Okay? At isang bagay po na makikita natin, ang isang okay, totoo at wagas na pinuno, okay? a leader with a deep sense of purpose and commitment, is undeterred. Doon natin makikita, ang nagpat, ang kumbaga, ang nag-udyok kay Nehemiah, hindi yung dahil it was a position-driven task. It's not because he's a governor, therefore, he was, 
you know, responsible to rebuild the city. No, because he was designated as a governor. Hindi. Kaya po siya naging governor on the first place na itinalaga po nung hari ay dahil nagsimula ito sa pusong dalisay. It began with a heart that was sincere, okay? That was dedicated and most of all, committed unto the Lord. And as a result, we saw Nehemiah never left the project, began the project, okay? Defended the project and finished the project in the end. At ang isang leader po, ang isang pinuno, remember last week I said, Okay, uh, Pastor, maybe you're saying, uh, but I'm not a leader. You know, remember, you are called a salt and light. Sabi ko, ikaw po ay asin at liwanag ng mundong ito. Yun ang talaga sa'yo ng Panginoon. And one of the best way for us as to serve as a salt and light, ano po ang gamit ng salt and light? Unang-una, what do you use the light for? The light is a beacon, liwanag, nag-guide. It serves as a guide. It leads people into, you know, from darkness onto light. Okay. Anong ginagawa ng asin? It preserves. Okay? It, it tries to kind of preserves or conserve what is, you know, about to be diminished or, no? or at the end, destroyed. So, tinan niyo po to, alam, naunawaan ni Nehemiah ang panawagan ng Diyos sa kanya. And I would like to believe that each one of us today watching or listening or you particularly part of Gateway, the Lord did not only call us to simply reach people but to build them up. And by all means, do not allow any destruction to deter you or slow you down or at worst, stop you from what God has begun in you and called you to do. Dapat para tayong si Nehemiah. Okay? Ano sabi ni Nehemiah? I am doing a great work. Okay? I remember one of my pastor friends uh, heard uh, this, uh, another version of this sermon and every time na magkita kami sa min sa akin, Pastor, alam mo, you know, I, I still remember. No, uh, one of your sermons where you said, I am doing a great work. And sabi niya, sa tubig naaalala ko yon, it gets me going. Dahil totoo naman, minsan nakakapagal, minsan nakakapagod, minsan nakaka-discourage ang ministry, minsan nakaka, kumbaga, nakaka, nakakayamot. No? Pero at the end of the day, you know you are called to be a salt and a light. And all that you can say is, I cannot stop because I am doing a great work. So ito ngayon ang tanong, should the work stop? By all means, it should not. We have to press on. We have to keep on. We have to keep the flame burning inside of us. So kung makikita po natin, I'd like to drive this point. God's agenda should always take precedence over everything okay, that we desire or do. Don't be distracted by either intimidations or flatteries okay, of the enemy. Dapat tayo po, sensitive tayo palagi. Dapat alam natin na ito ba ay paraan ng kaaway para ako ay kumbaga linlangin o ako ay hiluhin o ako iligaw. Ito ba ay kumbaga mga bagay na mag, mukhang maganda pero sa bandang huli ay ilalayo ako sa panawagan ng Diyos sa buhay ko. O ito talaga ang talaga ng Diyos at tugon ng Diyos sa kasulukuyang pinagdadaanan ko. Because at the end of the day, Okay, whatever goes your way, whether it's an opportunity or an obstacle, it leads to one thing if it is coming from God. How do you know it's coming from God? As I've said, whether it's an obstacle or an opportunity, it will draw you closer to God and it will expedite. Pabibilisin po nito or ito po ay kumbaga lalong pag-iinamin ang gawain ng Diyos sa pamamagitan mo. Okay, in short, consistent leaders, they are focused. Okay, they are focused on important okay, uh, things. And they know what matters most. In short, first things first. Okay? So, sa ating pong pagpapatuloy, looking back to Nehemiah, remember this. This is what he said. Remember, okay, even in the book of Hebrews, the, the author of Hebrews said this. Remember your leaders who spoke God's message to you. Okay? Reflect on the outcome of their lives and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I'd like you to look at this. Sabi ni author ng Hebrews, no? Na sabi niya, tingnan niyo, tandaan niyo, no? Guti, gunitain niyo yung mga pinuno niyo, yung mga mentor niyo, yung mga leaders niyo na patuloy na nagpapaalala sa inyo. Na bago niyo sila pakinggan, tanungin niyo yung sarili niyo. Minsan kasi alam niyo, totoo naman eh. Kahit na ako, even I when I was growing up as a leader, you know, I do not always agree with my mentor. No? Minsan pakiwari ko parang pinahihirapan mo lang ako. O minsan pakiwari ko parang you know, you know, you know, iba, iba, iba ka eh or iba ako, ganun no. 
Pero sa bandang huli, after a while, I realized na what my mentor is saying is true. Okay? Sa sitwasyon ko ngayon, I still consider a lot, some of my predecessors as my mentors. In fact, just a while back, you know, I even got corrected yet again with a simple, you know, uh, typographical error in what I, I, I wrote down as a quote. And I received a, a loving correction from my mentor through a message. And, you know, at first, if you are, if you are naive, no, sasabihin mo lang, grabe naman, eh, nagkamali lang naman. Alam nyo, as you mature in the Lord, you will realize one thing. No, as you mature in the Lord, you love corrections. You begin to love corrections because in the end, you know that corrections will better you. Kaya nga sabi sa Book of Hebrews, remember your leaders, okay? Remember your leaders who spoke God's message to you, okay? Tandaan niyo, gulita niyo. Bakit? Reflect on their outcome or the outcome. Kasi sa ibig sabihin, tignan niyo yung buhay nila, okay? Yung buhay nila ang huwaran mo, no? Parang sinabi ni Paul, follow me or imitate me as I imitate Christ. Why? Imitate their faith. Okay? In short, sa bandang huli, tayo po ang makikinabang. Kaya nga tayo tinlalagahan ng Panginoon, ng mga pinuno, ng mga mentor, or, or kung sino man, coaches, you may call them that, that God has appointed over your life not only to instruct you or impact your life, but for the most part of it, for you to learn from them so that in the end, you yourself would better your life and also gain the opportunity and privilege to mentor others as well. So kung titingnan po natin, no, napakahalagang maintindihan natin na hindi lamang po tayo accountable sa ating mga mentor, hindi lang tayo accountable as a leader. We are not only consistent, but more so, we see in the example of Nehemiah, a cooperating company, right? Ibig sabihin po nito, napakahalagang tayo po ay napapalibutan ng mga taong that builds us. Okay? If you surround your people with people, with kind of people that builds you, you find yourself strengthened. But if you, kumbaga, hang around with people that kind of limits, okay, or at the same time has the tendency to wayward your life's journey and shipwreck your fate, then, man, Run away from that company by all means. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, a collaborative mindset makes a seemingly difficult or, or the seemingly difficult and impossible doable. No? Kasi ta, kung tayo-tayo lang, alam nyo minsan, ang dali nating mag-quit, ang dali nating umayaw, ang dali nating huminto, ang dali nating tumigil. Pero pag meron tayong mga coaches, alam niyo po, you know, kahit na minsan ayaw mo na, you know, whether you're in the gym, you are you are on an athletic meet, you are on in the academic pursuit, you know, you are in the making of your dissertation or thesis, you know, you need an advisor, you need a coach, no? Or or even in life, you need a coach. And you as a person ought to be collaborative. You have to be cooperating because if you do not cooperate with your coach, at the end of the day, it is you who suffers the most. Kaya kung titignan po natin, sabi po dito, so the wall, ang ganda nito eh, sabi ni Nehemiah, was finished on the 20th, or, or the 25th day rather, of the month of Elul in the fifth, in 52 days, record breaking. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid. Now, let me just take that particular thing. In short, ito lang ang ibig sabihin nun. Yung isang bagay na mukhang mahirap gawin na hindi po naisagawa in the last 140 years. And Nehemiah came along. Look at this. The anointed of God, the anointed of God does not only build the wall or kumbaga finish the project, but in a record-breaking time accomplishes the task. In short, kung gusto nyo mapabilis, ang asenso ninyo, ang paglagu ninyo, ang inyo pong kumbaga pag-usad, huwag nyo nang patagalin. Umayon na lang kayo sa Panginoon, no? At kayo po ay maghanap, okay? Nang isang coach, isang mentor, isang isang taong gagabay sa iyo na handa kang pakinggan, sundin at paniwalaan at bukod sa lahat, alam mong talaga ng Diyos sa buhay mo. But this is a problem. Even when I was a growing minister, I realized one thing. Alam niyo po, sadly, I did not grow with a person coming to me and saying, 
Saul, would you like me to mentor you? That is, I think, one of the privileges I never enjoyed. But I did not kumbaga, make this, that that's an excuse. And when I realized that in my life, I was just going here and there and I'm doing things by trial and error and finding myself hurt more, I decided onto myself and I said, it's imperative that I found me a mentor. And so I did. Okay? Baliktad po ako, hindi po ako sinabihan na gusto mo i-mentor kita. Hindi, ako po yung nagtanong at nagsabi, nag-alok na pwede bang maging mentor. At kung hindi man ko i-alok talaga pong sinusubaybayan ko at ako yung nagpapasakop, ako po ay humihingi. No? And even our church leaders know this for a fact. We started as a church that is independent. Okay? Wala tayong, kumbaga, we have full autonomy. We can decide on our own. But you can ask even the leaders of our church. Two years into the Gateway journey, okay, 20, I think that was 2004 because Gateway started in 2002. I said to the leaders, we cannot keep on going as an independent church without any accountability because for all its worth, sabi ko, I want to have an accountability. I want to be accountable to somebody and I don't want to be the, baga, leadership stops on me. No, I want to be accountable because I'm not only accountable on you, but I'd like to be accountable to perhaps a group or a person. And alam nyo, napakahalaga that we also do that. Kaya nga may church. The church is not here to control you or to dictate on you. The church is here to guide you. So people who do not like accountability are treading on thin ice, as they would say. You are in danger. Okay? Ang hirap po that you are the leader of yourself. Somebody needs to lead you. Somebody needs to guide you. Because makikita po natin, masasabi ni Nehemiah after 52 days, mission accomplished. But did the job of Nehemiah really stop there? Hindi po. Nagpatuloy po. Basahin niyo po yung kwento at masusumpungan niyo doon na nagpatuloy po ang influence ni Nehemiah. Hindi lamang pagkatapos ng wall. Mutual cooperative, okay, function of the member hastens the process of building or, you know, and success. Napapadali po yung gawain pag tayo nagpapasakop. Kung gusto mong matuto, okay, huwag kang matanong. Hindi naman masamang magtanong. Pero huwag yung laging may reklamo ka. Bakit? No, tumalon ka. Bakit? No, gawin mo to Bakit? Gumawa ka nito. Bakit? No? Kung gusto mong mapadali ang iyong kumbaga, pag-usad, padaliin mo po ang pagpapasakop. It will take a lot of humility. It will take a lot of sacrifices. But that will expedite. That will hasten, pabibilisin po nito, ang paglago mo at pag-asenso mo sa iyong paglalakbay bilang isang mananampalataya kay Kristo. So, as we continue on further with this, another thing that you will observe with the Nehemiah journey is this. Great leaders almost always, okay, sabi nito, great are great simplifiers, no? Sabi nito, who can cut through the argument, debate, and doubt to offer solution Everybody can understand. Kaya nga alam nyo, kung titignan nyo, uh, yung mga talagang magagaling na leader, they can simplify, present a particular argument with a few words. But a new fight, nako, ang daming paliwanag. No? Ang daming paliwanag. No? We, we beat around the bush. We kind of gallivant around. But with a real leader, they're straight to the point. They show you the way. You know, no more detours, just straight on the path. Now, I remember I was talking to one person the other day about, you know, about the experience of like, uh, you know, staying fit. You know, that I, I think that's one of the habits that my wife and I loves to do. We, 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 you know, there was a time we were in the gym during pre-pandemic time. We crossfit at the same time at some point. Uh, these days, we, we don't go to the gym that much, but at least we make sure that we, we stay in fit by running or by walking or you know, even in the house, we turn the house into our own kumbaga, personal gym by, you know, watching YouTube works out, work out. My wife does it a lot. But I'm pretty much more of going outside the house and walking, you know, and just enjoying the scenery just the same. Now, I remember saying one time, alam nyo, may dalawang taong naglalaro sa gym eh. uh, I've been in the gym for quite some time in the last couple of years. And na-realize ko na when you go to the gym, May iba't ibang klaseng taong naglalaro sa gym, but mostly you can categorize them into two people or two kinds of people. Those who train strictly and those who talk. 
Okay? Ibig sabihin, maraming nasa gym na magji-gym sila, magkakaibigan sila, pero most of the time, nagkukwentuhan lang sila. Bubuhat ng konte, kukwento ng mas matagal yung kwento kaysa sa buhat, matagal yung you know, mag, uh, mag, bench press ng konte, tapos magkukwento, tuupo, tapos pagkatapos doon is bench press. So, ang tagal, no? Ang tagal nilang nagkwentuhan, mas matagal pa yung kwento nila kaysa doon sa talagang trabaho nila. Pero yung mga serious trainings, yung talagang nagtitrain, okay, they will put on their outfit, no? They will set themselves into motion and they will hardly talk to people until they finish their training. So, ganun din po tayo. As believers, we are in this world training ourselves, preparing. Kaya ngayon sinasabi ni Paul na I am someone not beating the air. Okay? Baka sa bandang huli, after preaching the gospel, in the end, I find myself disqualified. So, great leaders are almost always great simplifiers who can cut through the argument, debates, and doubt to offer solutions Everybody can understand. So in short, okay, I remember, uh, uh, I think it was like uh, our speaker in the GLS, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, uh, Kari Newoff, when he says, you know, your public, okay, walk should match your private talk. You know, ang version ko dyan simple lang. Iba yung sinasabi, iba yung ginagawa. Who you are when no one is around is at the end who you really are. Okay? So, kung titignan po natin as we continue on. Great leaders, or like Nehemiah, as we have been talking about, are not only consistent, they are not only a cooperating company, but most of the time, a contributing spirit. You know that they're not only talking to you, they're not just coaching you, they're not just instructing you. But for the most part of it, makikita mo, as you continue to hang around them some more, okay, you learn. You begin to see improvement, habits that at first was hard until it becomes natural to you. No? Una, hinihingal-hingal ka, kaya ayaw na ayaw mo yung coach mo kasi talagang pinipilit ka, tumakbo ka pa, sige, kaya mo pa yan. Parang ayaw na ayaw mo kasi hirap na hirap ka na. Pero after quite some time, yung dating hirap na hirap ka, hingal na hingal ka, minamani mo na lang. Parang wala na, wala na sa'yo. No? Nung una-unang nag kami, you know, during this pandemic time to start walking, Talagang naglalakad kaming mag-asawa, talagang you know, isang kilometro, dalawang kilometro pa lang, hinihingal na kami. But these days, parang, I can walk five kilometers, six kilometers, or run, walk, run, walk, you know, parang ganon, uh, five to six kilometers straight. It's just normal, right? And you love it. You're sweating. You're, you're wow, you feel good after. Why? Because shaping a good habit at first may not feel good. You know, doing what is right does not always feel right. That's the irony. Alam nyo, the irony is this. Doing things wrong, like eating, overeating, etc., you know, uh, undisciplined lifestyle, you know, doing things that are wrong often feels right until they feel wrong. Pag nararamdaman mo medyo hinihingal ka na, o oh, mukhang atakihin na ako parang ganun, taas ang blood pressure ko, saka mo mararamdaman na bunga yun ng mga maling habits mo. But look at this. Doing things right does not always feel right. But keep doing it until it feels right. It's just like going to the gym as I was saying. You know, unang-una parang ayaw mo ang hirap no nung unang mga araw mo, the first few days, the first few weeks, it was hard, you know. You're having muscle cramps, you are you know exhausted, you know. But as you continue to go into that particular training direction, you find yourself, okay? in a better okay composure gumaganda ang tulog mo maganda ang kumbaga ang ang you know ang tindig mo you even look your physique would look better at the end so you know somebody a coach in particular a contagious leader you know god would assign over your life maybe a squad leader a cell leader a coach a life coach or a mentor i mean at first parang Ayaw mo na kasama mo sila kasi minsan when they talk, parang hindi mo kayang gawin. Parang imposible naman yun. Hindi ko kayang ganun. But if you give it a chance, if you give it an opportunity and you yield, alam nyo, no? makikita mo victory and unity, okay? Celebrated through generous expressions. You know, your coach is pouring, you know, his know-how over your life and vice versa. You're beginning to experience a collaborative, you know, experience in your squad in your cell groups or in your growth groups and eventually we have now worship stations 
Now, kahit nasa kalagitnaan na wala tayong, you know, kumbaga big, okay, uh, what they call that, uh, physical or ins- on-site gatherings, we, we are still gathering in, in many different platforms, in smaller clusters or in digital format, but we're here. We're growing. We're coming together. You know, we're working with what's available. Okay? Hard is not excuse. Okay, ulitin ko. Hard is not an excuse. Hindi mo po pwedeng sabihin na, ang hirap kasi, ayoko na. If that's gonna be your way, let me tell you, you will never win a battle. Because winning a battle takes a lot of preparation. Takes a lot of blood and sweat and sacrifices. So, a contributing spirit is somebody who's unwilling to give up. Now, makikita natin, Nehemiah came, he's a great, brilliant leader, he brought all the resources, but still, he needed the people to join him. In short, kahit na po sa church natin, no? perhaps we have good leaders. Yes, and I, I thank our leaders, you know, from, from, of course, our staff in the admin, our, our people in the pastoral team, you know, our worship team, everybody, you know, our technical team, talented guys, you know, very good in editing, very good in production. Lahat po ito ay ta- mga iba't ibang disiplina, iba't ibang kumbaga, skills that came together. We are not perfect in our own way. We need each other. We came together to cooperate. We came together to celebrate. And in the end, we come up with something good. So, mga kapatid sa Panginoon, realize this. On top of us coming together, ito yung pinakamaganda. As we come together as a community, God joins us. Or for the most part of it, we join God. Okay? So, tandaan po natin, victory yielded a generous abundance of gratitude giving and worship. Sa bandang huli, hindi po tayo nagtitipid. Hindi po tayo, kumbaga, nag-aalanganin. Kung hindi tayo, ta- yung kumbaga, taus-puso at sadyang nagbibigay ng panahon, nagbibigay ng tulong, because our heart, remember last week, Nehemiah felt the need. Nehemiah saw the need, felt the need, okay, was concerned for the need, took responsibility for the need, and for the most part of it, take, okay, took rather a step to meet the need. Okay, kung titignan po natin ito, sabi po dito sa Nehemiah chapter 7, okay, verse 70, fast forward from chapter 1, ano sabi ito? Now some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the work, okay, the governor gave to the treasury 1,000, okay, darics of gold, 50 basins, you know, sabi nito, 30 priest garments and 500 minas of silver. Now, I do not have the equal equivalent of modern day currency as to date, but understand this. It's, it's suffice to say, Nehemiah gave. The leader gave, the people gave, and as a result, everybody rejoiced. Wala pong kuripot, wala pong pakipot. No? Ang hirap kasama sa grupo ng mga kuripot at pakipot. Yung mga ayaw umambag, yung mga ayaw tumulong. Nakita, naramdaman, pero hindi po okay, nakisama. Friends, as we continue on and kind of climax with this, I hope you're getting the drift of the Nehemiah journey. A heart in awe of God's providence will always abound in rich generosity. And when I say generosity, people always kumbaga, confuse generosity with giving. No? Generosity is more of the character. Giving is the result of generosity. Okay? Because you can give without being generous. Nagbigay ka kasi na, nasama ka lang. Eh. Kumbaga, you know, para lang hindi naman nakakahiya, nagbigay ka din. But almost always, look at this, generous people, hindi mo sila mauunahan sa pagambag. They will give their time, they will give their effort, they will give their resources, and they would give anything that they are able to give. Why? Not simply because they're giving, but for the most part of it, because they are generous. And we serve a generous God. I think we ourselves ought to be like our Father, generous in every way. So, kung titignan po natin dito, as we kind of climax this, the best teamwork 
comes from men who are working independently towards one goal in unison. I am not here to work for my own benefit. I am not here to work for my convenience. I am here working to glorify my Lord and my King. And as I do that, okay, share with the work of ministry with you alongside me. Mga kapatid sa Panginoon, as we end this, remember this, every motive is directed towards the building of the community. And as I've said last week, the best expression of community is relationship. Because we can be, okay, kumbaga, we can be connected, you know, physically, but we might be disconnected spiritually. Sama-sama tayo, pwede yun. Magkaasama tayo. Pero sa totoo lang, malayo ang puso natin sa isa't isa. Okay? So, I hope na hindi ganon. I hope na we are closely knitted together, not only in work, not only in deed, but most of all, in heart. Because after all, community is relationship. So at the end of the day, you realize one thing. Once growth and progress is nurtured and influenced by a functional and connection, or a functional connection, by a functional connection, meaning relationship and community. Okay? Kung titignan po natin dito, makikita natin that every motive is directed by what God is doing. So, as we close, remember this, the difficult becomes achievable in the company of united hearts. Pag tayo sama-sama, pag tayo nagkakaisa, kahit na nasa gitna pa ng pandemya, meron pong pag-asa. Dahil nga, as we continue to press on and join God in this particular quest of reaching people, transforming God, understand one thing. Associating with the right company and mindset shapes our future and we can heal as one. Okay? We can move as one. And praise God. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen? So, Let's end here, and I hope that you have a great Sunday. God bless you. We'll see you again as we see the next week ahead and as we continue to journey on towards June. Because at the end of the day, let me close this. Psalms 34, Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, seek peace and pursue it. May the peace of God bless your heart. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week. And may God give you victory. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us again this Sunday, as this is a momentous occasion where we remember the goodness and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as we prepare, I would need you to take something to stand in as your communion elements. For the bread, you can take a piece of bread or anything that you can partake with. And for the cup, you can take a glass of water or anything, any beverage that you can use and we will do this together by instruction so follow the instructions and before we do let us remember how God is and how good he is I will be reading from scripture as we'll be reading from 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 26 and as we remember along these lines let us also remember and Let's also follow the instructions that will be shown. And it goes like this. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night which he was betrayed took bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the bridge was far too wide. From the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside And there at the cross you paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I had hoped Thank you Jesus for the blood of life Thank you Jesus it has washed me white Thank you Jesus you have saved into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but you walk right out again. And now that has no sting.
glory to his name there to my heart was the blood of life glory to his Well, it's time to give. So it's that time of the service right now that we take our time to prepare ourselves and think about God's goodness as we also give and give glory by doing so. All right, now, while we're doing this, I need you to look back into how God has blessed you for the past few days. For me, for everybody else, we're already half in the year, I believe. At this point, we're at this at this point now. You're watching it, and as we go through it, I think we've already hit the month of June, and I think we'll be hitting July and so on. We're getting further and further into the year, and in each time, every time, there's always an exam, there's always a test for all of us, but at the same time, it is also a time when we remember that God is always with us. As a reminder of that, of that goodness. Do you remember the time when we talked about a covenant where there was this agreement between God and us humans, us people? Now, do you remember that time when God said, what is that you have in your hand? We talked about Moses a bit there on how he had the staff, how he used it. But there are also other prophets that had the same thing. I believe we've seen a few number of judges as well who also went through that. Though the first one that comes to mind was Elijah and Elisha. Though in that time, it was just a mantle, mind you. It's just a mantle. It's the cloak that Elijah always carries. And then Elisha kept following. He kept following and he said, I won't leave until I have that have, I, until I have that anointing. I won't leave until I become your next, your successor. Keep going. And then by the time that the chariots of fire came uh, and uh, take Elijah away, Elisha, it was like, oh no, he's gone. What was me? What would you give me at this point now? What, what, what am I going to do? And then you see the... <laughs> so he's falling out from the sky. There it is. There's the mantle. It's like... Oh, wait. Hey, Bosta. And that's how he got the anointing. Sometimes God would give you what you're supposed to use even without waiting or anything to fall into your hands, to your lap. Sometimes he just gives it to you and asks you, what do you have right there in your hands? And a meron mo? Now, if we fast forward that a bit, tignan natin yung bata. Let's go back to the New Testament real quick here. You may notice I'm jumping all over and here and there. You would notice that there's a difference there. There's a, a, an oddly different situation here. Because you have a little kid who only has Two loaves of bread and uh, bread and fish, basically. That's all he has. And it's not enough to feed 5,000 people. I mean, that's a lot of people, 5,000 people. And if you're just accounting men, that's 5,000. And then if you count the women and the children, there might be more. It's a lot. Now, logistic wise, what he has is enough for one person. But he, the little boy was willing to provide. One of the disciples said, Lord, we got someone here who has fish and loaves what do we do hand it over give thanks and praise and as he did so Jesus passed on these items these food items to feed the people it won't stop <laughs> it's because someone was willing to give the blessing he just won't stop he just won't stop until all 5,000 
or more at, at best. All of them were fed. So what does that make it for us? Now, if you look at it closely, it's about how you partner with God, how you partner with God by your willingness. There's always that keyword, willingness. Before anything massive happens, you have to obey. Now, we kind of touched on about Elisha and Elijah earlier, and we mentioned how Elisha was like, wait, what are, what are we going to do? All he did was follow at that time. He, all he did was follow and obey, and the next thing he knew, he was the next uh, prophet that was supposed to be taking over Elijah's uh, mission, and then Elisha's doing the same thing now, to the point that even his bones would even stop. The kid who gave the five out of loaves and fish, he was willing to give that he pres- uh, because God asked to. Jesus asked for it. And lo and behold, it became the vessel of that blessing to bless others. But what about you? What is your fish and loaves then? What is the stick that you're ready to give? What is that thing that you're ready to give? Now, if you take that moment, look back to what you have. For me, I have the drum set. For me, I have my voice, my writing skills. I I can write. I write stories. I tell stories. That's what I do most of the time. And that's how I've been helping friends out as we conduct um, collaborative storytelling. That's how we do things. And through those moments, I tend to also take the chance to teach about how consequent how there are consequences to actions how there are certain things that if they do something they can do it how you also have a way of teaching people of reaching out to people of blessing people your prayers they're valuable your service that is valuable your tithes and offerings even though if it's finances if you can if you think you cannot even provide a means to assist you can use that to give. Now, are you ready to partner? That's my question to you. So as we take this moment, as you take your quote unquote five fish and two loaves, those two items that you have, as you can take your wallets, or as you take anything that you have at home that you would like to use to serve people, to serve God by blessing other people, by blessing this ministry, to keep this going. Take that moment and say, Lord, use this. If you could use anything, Lord, use me. Use what I have. Let's take that moment, though. And before I show you the directions of how you could do it and how you could give on screen, let's take this moment to dedicate what we have. Father, what we have in our hand is not ours. What we have right here something that we can provide, Lord. It's what we currently have. If you could use it, then feel free to use it. We offer it to you, Lord God. And we offer it to you to have it sanctified, to have it set aside, to give you glory and to give you praise. Now may you use this as a blessing, as a channel of blessing, to bless others, so that anyone who is in need, anyone who is in need of your blessing, of your goodness, May this be that answer to their prayer, that answer to their plea. Thus we offer it to you, Lord God. We give you all the glory and honor and praise in Christ's name. Amen. All right, on the screen you would see directions on how you can give. Um, There are channels on how you can give these. You can do so through online uh, giving. You can see those uh, numbers right there, those details right there. Uh, If you're watching us on Facebook right now, there's also Facebook stars where you can just like, make a purchase and then also send it over to us. That's also another way you can support. There's so many ways that you can support, so feel free to do so. Uh, You can see it on the screen right now. And if in case you have other questions, you can also feel free to contact us and we will help you on how you can assist. All right, so let's take this moment to give and let us be a channel of blessing. Stewardship. It's kind of a churchy word, but what does it mean? This is stewardship plain and simple. Meet John. He loves to play golf, eat Italian, and go to the movies. He has a house, a car, and a job that pays the bills. In his free time, he catches up on the latest game and he plays his guitar. 
So here's where stewardship comes in. Everything John has, from his TV, to his car, to even his ability to play guitar. Well, none of it actually belongs to him. Are you ready for this? From the little things, all the way to the big stuff, like his house, it all belongs to God. You're a steward of everything God gave you. It's a privilege, and he expects you to be responsible, not just with your finances, but your time, talents, and toys. So what does it mean to be responsible? Well, like hosting a Bible study at your house, or using your free time to visit someone in the hospital, or how about giving money to an out-of-work friend? It's all stewardship. So when it's time to give back, say the plate gets passed, or the children's minister asks you to serve in the toddler's room again, think to yourself this one simple question. Does what I have belong to me or God? Wow, how time flies. Indeed, it flies real quickly because it's already at the end. You're now at the end of the service. Thank you very much for joining us here at Gateway Community Church. Now, if you're tuning in at this particular hour or this particular time and you catched, or you caught rather, this section, you might be a little too late. <laughs> but don't worry because you can catch us again. You can catch this service from the beginning once you check out our VODs, our VODs. And you can do so by checking us in any of our channels right now. But if you made it here for since the beginning, thank you very much for joining us and I congratulate you for staying with us. So what are we looking forward to for the upcoming uh, days of this week? Well, we have, well, I did mention that we have our three services. We have 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 6 p.m., which you can catch on Facebook first on the morning. You have YouTube as well, where we show the where we stream as well. And we also have Church Online, which you can catch in the evening. So those are the times, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 6 p.m. Now, what else is coming up? We have the Tuesdays and Fridays. We usually have these for prayer meetings. So if you want to join us right now at that point, feel free to join us on Zoom. We have that every time. So join us in on the prayers. We're usually having that at around two or three or so. You will see the time, uh, uh, time right there and you can join us so we can pray together and encourage each other. Now, if you want to do a little weekly check-in, we also have the midweek service on Wednesday. We usually have that in the evening this time. So if in case you're wondering, we have the details on the screen right now on what time exactly you're going to be joining in and you should be able to join us. And looks like we are now in the month of June. I think we're hitting onwards to another month onwards after this so oh boy <laughs> well we are now almost at the middle of the year or we might be at the middle of the year at this point so wow 2021 zooming in real fast well thank you very much for joining us though and may you continue to join us again every week and every time that you can because this time let us make it a point that we reach people and transform lives this is gateway community church and thank you very much for joining us my name is Zeke, and I will see you again within this week and next week. See you on Sunday.